G'day, it's Jay Thomas 1310. Just sort of wanting to touch on a bit of what's been happening in the news recently. Um, for those that um, do um, watch regular videos that don't, and, or you do and you're not quite sure, but uh, I do live in Australia, and um, as of recent, with all the tensions that the, the world's experiencing with the US, China, Russia, and, and then North Korea, it's back in the picture for it as well. But, um, some comments made by some of our foreign ministers has um, upset North Korea and then they've actually made a threat to to actually nuke us because of what they were talking about and about sanctions and then blindly following as an ally to the US while they're bullying the world. So, you know, it's, it's a position that Australia really hasn't been in for, for quite some time you know, with the risk of war. You know, I suppose there is always a potential that you know, some Asian areas could always march into Australia at any time, but you know, we always have quite good relations you know, and a lot of trade and, and tourism in between, which you know, supports both, so it's not something that's ever probably going to be you know, too high of a risk of occurring, you know, since we are so close. And then you know, from what happened in the previous war, you know, we've you know, Darwin being bombed, the uh, Japanese and, and whatnot, you know, we are very close range for military forces from there to hurt us. And then, you know, I'm not sh too sure what to think, you know, with what risk we might actually have with, with North Korea potentially striking Australia. You know, I, I think a lot of it is just him trying to sort of defend himself, so to speak. You know, my analogy sort of is what I would see it as is, you know, when you're, if you're sitting at a, a table with a whole bunch of people and everyone's there talking about attacking you, then you know, you're probably going to get a little bit defensive and, you know, spark up a bit and show a bit of threat to try and, you know, defend yourself. So I think he knows, you know, the force that he was going to, he'll cop, you know, if someone steps in, you know, I don't know if he would ever actually probably make a first strike. I don't think he uh, may have the capability to do something massive and quick. You know, maybe in, in Asia where they are, where it's quick to do, similar to what the Germans did with you know, their Blitzkrieg, you know, move fast and quick, neighbouring neighboring countries, you know, you can do a fair bit of you know, invasion before you know, anyone else can come and, and try and stop, so you can have a good surrounding area and reinforce from the centre, but you know, if he was to try and invade the US, I don't know how far he'd actually get. It'd be pretty bloody hard. You know, with an armed population and militias and a strong military presence already in the country. You know, as soon as you try something, it's going to be full-fledged attack. You know, although a good bulk of the forces are already deployed off, off nearby. So, you know, it's going to be pretty tough so he knows he's going to be friggin wiped out by trying something so if you're going to be trying something I'm pretty sure you'd be doing it as a last ditch effort for it just to go down with a fight so to say so hopefully it is all um, you know, just, just talk just trying to flex some muscle to try and look a bit scary so he doesn't get attacked by US and in any other allies especially if they're negotiating with China. I'm pretty sure they do a fair bit of trade with North Korea, so that'd be a, a probably a reason why they got defensive about the intentions of going in there as well. So, I don't know, but you know, it's not something that we've ever had to experience in my lifetime that there was a threat like this and the potential for you know, our country to see ourselves at war at home. So. You know, I am, I am a little bit of a prepper. I've got a, a bit of gear to help myself, but you know, as to what sort of damage would occur and where would people be struck, you know, would they hit a, a major city, I don't know, Brisbane or something like that, more north, up at Darwin. You know, I don't see any of those as being a tactical advantage of, of hitting us, so it'd be a a waste of an expensive nuke for him and, and achieve no benefit bar feeling the full wrath of the US afterwards. It just give him an excuse to go in there and wipe it out. So yeah, especially you know, when we're sort of a in-between ally of it all. You know, with the 
the little brother of the the Western Alliance, so you could probably put it as. So I don't know. It's it's a very scary time at the moment, and you know, I think so much corruption's involved in it all. Yeah, it's all about money, money and resources and and control. It's a, a very sad situation, and and unfortunately, it's all us, us the peasants to them that are gonna get you know cop the whole bulk of it if any of this stuff ever happens you know, they're all got their their bunkers for the rich people that have you know, gone and bought them all and all the all the politicians you know that, that's no secret there that they've got all them it's you know they're looked after so it'll just be all us left to fight for ourselves on the on the surface if any of that crap happens so it's just all cross fingers and hope for the best that none of that ever has to happen and we can you know, put a stop to it all peacefully and have resolve but unfortunately humankind's nature is just so controlling and possessive and so always going to eventually get there I suppose and just the longer we have of quiet time in between is just more time for them to build bigger and better bombs and more ways of killing and make more destruction so I dare say at some point in history it's gonna gonna happen to us so let's just hope it doesn't happen at our time and by the time we ever get to that point the world's had a big come to and realize we can all live together in peace but not sure we could um, get there at this stage there's just so much division uh, you see so many people you know thinking that you know they're getting more equal rights these days you know with all the people identifying as different things you know it is a big win and that step for people to be recognized in you know what they identify as you know for being you know gay and you know race and other other beliefs and whatnot you know it is good that that stepped up but really once you start sort of identifying as all that it's just more division so you know they're segregating everyone into to that you know it's strange that governments would all of a sudden just sort of change that I suppose and allow that stuff to happen when it was so heavily stopped before so you know they obviously saw some benefit the more that we're at each other's throats you can see it ever happen yes you know, since the US elections and whatnot too everyone's just and left and right and in between they just at each other's throat as soon as someone has an opinion about something everyone's attacked you know you can just see it's, it's divided everyone we're too focused on you know not offending and or deliberately offending and making examples of people who think some way and instead of just realizing that hey we're all we're all just considered um feeders is what we've been referred to by some of the world's biggest elite you know like the Rothschilds you know they you know, and even I think David Rockefeller mentioned that we were just feeders so you know they're the they're the only ones that are contributing to this planet and we're just eating it up so we're, we're considered a, a parasite in, in their eyes for whatever plans they got for this world so don't ever think it's probably what they're doing is in our best interest so yes a lot of a lot of conspiracy theories about it all but you know so much is just starting to come to light of things and you now they're admitting to it and yeah I don't know a lot of a lot of the things that 20 years ago people would talk about and when it's told to put a tinfoil hat on for you know it's fucking happened so <laughs> maybe take heed you know, don't accept blindly everything you hear but you know, maybe take heed listen and research and before something happens you know maybe we can see that it'll happen before and we can stop it and you know let them know hey where we know what you've got planned here and you know, don't go about it but i don't know i don't want to be <laughs> the conspiracy channels i want to try and keep this more to motor blogging and writing but it is a pretty interesting topic and you know so much is happening these days you know the world is accelerating at this insane pace you can't even keep up with the amount of conflict that's occurring and tensions you know, you know 
if, if we're ever closer to midnight, you know, I think we're within the next few <laughs> a few seconds of midnight now. You know, it's not not a couple of minutes to midnight no more. So, you know, everyone out there, you know, stay safe, love everyone, don't spread hate. You know, I've touched about it on other vlogs before, but you know, even I was picking up on that stuff within motor vloggers, you know, sort of hating on them between each other. Everywhere there's just tension and, and conflict. You know, everyone just needs to take a chill pill. You know, go get a bike, go for a ride. <laughs> That's what I've done today. I you know, just spent the last two hours just chilling actually at the um you know, at the lookout down at Lennox Head. You know, absolutely love it there. Just watching all the parasailers just sit there floating about. It's great weather, you know, not hot sitting there in the levers, so it's always the bad thing when I usually go there, so, you know, I always didn't want to have to sit there sweating away, but got the skins, levers, semi, semi-warm day, great day of autumn, so I um, really enjoyed it, and then it sort of, you know, made me want to think and talk to me, just talk to my friend about a lot of the things that's going on and what we fought, and so that's sort of what's inspired this topic for the ride back home. So yeah, if let me know what you think. Anyway, drop a drop a comment down below. I, um, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber yet and you want to see more riding videos and and me rambling on about shit while I'm riding the R3. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for the support, guys. Be right out there. Stay safe and be sure to keep the rubber side down.